Hi friends, this is Dina and welcome to my new video. Today is finally the time for my highly anticipated new bullet journal setup because the halfway point of the year is so close and I cannot believe it. If you didn't know, I always use two bullet journals per year and after June it's always time for me to set up my new bullet journal and that's what this video is all about. So yeah, let's say goodbye to my old beautiful journal and let's say hello to the new one. So the new journal that I'm going to be using is the same as before but with a different color which I honestly love much more. I'm going to be using this Mellow Days Reverie beautiful sage green notebook that has dotted watercolor paper. I've loved using this journal and I will use them till the end if I can. If you want to get a similar notebook from them, you can always use my discount code DINA10 to get 10% off. They currently don't have this exact one in their shop yet. It will possibly come to their website in like a month or at least within a month, I would say. But they do have one other color there currently. They just wanted to ship me my order a little bit sooner because we've worked a lot together with the brand and I'm very grateful for that. I absolutely love the brand and they did not ask me to say anything or this is not sponsored, you know, the drill. <laughs> if you want to get the link for this notebook or my discount code, that info is always listed in my video descriptions. But let's get into the actual setup now. As you can see, I wrote my name on the first page of the notebook, but now we can flip to my cover page. So I always like to make my new bullet journal setups themed and I always like to paint them. So I was really trying to think about like a new way to make it since I feel like I've been including the same kind of flowers in my bullet journal setups a lot. I've been painting a lot of daisies, which was my first idea again. But since I've been seeing really beautiful pansies out in the wild lately and I also have a pansy uh, like plant in my balcony as well I thought that I might as well paint them so yeah I did a good sketch beforehand on my cover page I have in this spread on the left side I have my like yearly title and a little illustration and on the right side I have my key page so yeah, I'm starting with watercolors and this time I'm actually not using my usual watercolor palette at all. I'm going to be using my Winter and Newton watercolors. I tried out doing like a little sketch beforehand and for some reason these just worked better. I'm not sure if these are actually better quality than the ones that I normally use, but for some reason I just liked working with them better. So I took them out and used them for this and honestly I haven't used them in years. So I think it was a good choice to, you know, try them out again. But yeah, I'm starting with some purpley and pink shades. That's definitely not a color scheme that I usually like to go for. I like more earthy tones and, you know, just more neutral colors, but I definitely wanted to do something different. So I went for these purples and pinks and blues for this setup. So I'm starting with the first pansy flower and as you can see I just made a really light wash of like pinkish purple here for the petals first and then I started dragging this a little bit darker pink um, in the middle to the center of the petals and I also just added that same color to the outer edges a little bit. I tried to go for really light layers first and just like gradually darken the colors a little bit so I wouldn't immediately just go for really dark colors and realize that I did too much and I cannot <laughs> go back. So I really tried to just like gradually go darker and as you can see I'm just adding that like almost black purple color in the center of the flower. I tried to look at um, pictures of pansies and many times the like first three petals in the front have a different shade than the ones in the back so I tried to also just like make some little color variation between those petals so the ones that were in the back for this biggest pansy flower that I made here first I made those um, petals in the back a little bit more blue and I really like that color combination of like including pinks and purples and blues for this whole theme. And I pretty much always did the same exact thing. I added much darker colors to the center and to the areas of the petals that were underneath other petals. So they would kind of, you know, show that they're a little bit more in the shadow. 
you know, pretty simple things I would say, but I definitely was struggling with the fact that I oftentimes work with watercolors in much more messy and uh, imperfect ways. Like watercolors are the medium for me where I can really, really and loosely just paint something without having to focus on the details too much. But here I definitely wanted to work, focus on the details. So it was much more like hard of a process than I've had before when I've painted with watercolors, but I really enjoyed the process honestly and it was much faster than if I would have used gouache because I tried that out as well in my sketchbook but yeah I am happy that I went for watercolors and I found that um, patience within me when I was working on the petals of these flowers but yeah as you can see there is definitely a huge contrast between the middle of the flower and the like middle side of the petals if that makes any sense <laughs> but yeah I really like that it made them look really dramatic but also very interesting when I thought about the composition of this cover page and the illustration, I tried to make sure that there was enough flowers but also enough white space in between. I always like to think about that because I don't want my spreads to look too crowded or too messy or like I haven't thought about, you know, spacing out the details and elements in the pages. I feel like that definitely was an issue with some of my other spreads, but I'm happy that uh, usually my cover pages are the pages that I think about the most and, you know, spend most time, um, you know, perfecting and making sure that they look good. So I'm really happy with, you know, the balance with the spread and how it turned out in the end. As you can see, I made little stems for the flowers. I didn't want to make them super detailed or anything. I pretty much just made a pretty thin stem for all of them and made the um, other side of it a little bit darker so it would look more dimensional, I guess. And then I added a couple of little leaves for the stems just so it would look a little bit more interesting. I also painted the middle sections of the flowers yellow. I think it contrasted the kind of colder tones in the petals really well and I liked that it just added a little pop of color to my pages. But with that, the illustration itself is now done and I'm starting to add other details to this page. So I was really inspired by a great friend of mine who also does beautiful bullet journaling things and art uh, posts on the internet, uh, Blumendot. She always likes to include these beautiful like shapes in her bullet journal setups and I especially remember one of her like new bullet journal setups that she made and it had these beautiful like arch uh, shaped papers in them. So I wanted to include one here as well. So I will leave her socials down below. So definitely go and check her out if you haven't already she makes beautiful things but yeah I just glued that paper into the center of the whole spread and then on top on the left side kind of next to the painting that I just made I added the serif font letters or numbers <laughs> with the yearly um, title so I just wrote 2023 even though this is not the beginning of the year I like to have this title kind of showing what year we are currently going in and this is kind of interesting I just counted my bullet journals and I realized that this is my ninth bullet journal that I've ever filled so that's kind of exciting next uh, year is going to be a anniversary I guess <laughs> So on the other side of the spread, I'm making my key page. And as you can see, I'm using this kind of burgundy archer and olive acrylograph to write the word key. I just decided to go for this color. So I don't know, it would bring some something more interesting to this page and it would be just a nice pop of color again. Then I'm adding my keys on this little rectangle box underneath. I actually ended up completely um, covering the whole frame that I made here. I didn't like it. And I also made a little typo in the key um section as well so there was a lot of things to you know clean up and fix <laughs> before I was done with this but yeah the key page definitely was a super simple thing I've said this many times before I don't really use my key page it's not a very useful spread for me but I still like including it just because it's more aesthetic this way <laughs> I'm going looks first I guess
then before I was done, I just quickly added a couple of these little papers on the corners of the left page. I have this old book page that I added on to the corners so it would look more interesting and I think that was a good idea. But yeah, that is it for my cover page. I really love how it turned out and now I'm going to be setting up my future lock page. I always kind of use the same layout for my future logs. I actually almost tried to use a different layout and go for different kind of elements and paintings, but I thought that this actually would be better. So I went with the very uh, familiar <laughs> way of making it, but I actually really like the fact that I did that because I think this is one of my favorite pages in the whole setup. So I pretty much always make my future locks in the same way. Like I said, I taped a little like long rectangular box on the upper side of the spread and also in the like middle section going across the whole spread. And as you can see, I'm just kind of freehand painting these pansies onto that taped box. And that is going to be like my title box header type of thing behind my monthly um, titles. <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense, but you know, I'm going to be writing, you know, my months on top of this box and underneath I will have all of those mini calendars. As you can see, I'm going with this very loose way of painting the pansies. I, of course, spent a lot more time on the cover page and made them more detailed and intricate. But here I was just really just taking some color from my palette and just putting it onto the paper and making the middle section again a little bit darker, but I was just letting the paint bleed to the other side of the petals so it was definitely more relaxed and more fun and much faster of a painting process which I really enjoyed. Definitely a lot of fun painting this and I definitely felt like it was super therapeutic as well. <laughs> I also think that the color scheme again just really came through with this painting especially because all of the colors were just kind of there together next to each other and perfectly just balanced each other out and made this beautiful very dreamy looking page with all of the beautiful pansies. And I also made the centers again with the yellow color and uh, it's definitely a little bit of a contrast from the actual petals, but again, I think it made it look much nicer and it had a little pop of color, which I really liked. And then I just took off the tapes and I started working on the actual spread itself. As you can see, I'm just speeding through <laughs> making the mini calendars underneath those boxes that I just painted. And if you don't know what a future log is, it's a place where you can, you know, schedule things and mark things on your calendar in advance. Because many times when we bullet journal, we have the monthly setups, but of course there are events and dates and important things to remember even before you have set up your monthly uh, theme for each of those months so you can always in this feature log just add things that are going to be happening throughout the year and add your like loved ones birthdays and things like that for example i mostly add only birthdays to my future log because i oftentimes don't have many very important dates set for many months in advance so yeah i basically only have birthdays here but i think it's a great way to you know have those important dates with you in your bullet journal without having to set up your monthly setups in advance you know and i'm very proud that i was able to make 12 mini calendars without any mistakes this time so after I was done with the calendars itself, I wrote the monthly titles on top of those boxes with a cursive hand lettering style. And then I also just outlined those titles with my white pen. It didn't work out perfectly because my white pens were running out of ink again, but I still really like how it turned out. And that's it. That was super simple, super fast. And I would highly recommend that style to you as well if you would like to make your um, spread with very interesting look, but not too much time. <laughs> 
So now we are setting up my goals page in this whole setup. As you can see, I'm starting with painting again. I'm going to be painting another pansy flower, but this time I wanted to make it even more realistic. So it was a nice balance between like super loose and messy and more intricate and detailed. And I really like that. And here I think that I already also got the hang of it because I have been painting them so many times because even before starting to film this video, I made a lot of practice paintings. So I was only getting better at it, which was really nice. So as you can see, I'm making this beautiful beautiful purple pansy here. I try to make it in a different way this time because I was looking at photos on the internet and of course they have many different shapes and they have different kinds of like little black markings in them. So uh, here I decided to paint most of the petals with this purple color and then I left a little white spot in the middle and um, in that white spot I also added those um, really dark blue, almost black little lines and I actually really love how that turned out. Yeah, I've loved painting with watercolors recently in my bullet journal themes. It has always been a medium where I've struggled a little bit more. Again, like I said, I've always kind of made these loose paintings. So painting something more realistic with watercolors has always been kind of, um, I don't know, intimidating to me. So it has been a nice practice in these last couple of months where I've used it a little bit more and I've definitely enjoyed it a lot. But with that, the whole painting is now done again and I'm starting to work on this spread itself. I again added that old book page paper onto the corner of the spread and then I stamped the word goals on top of the flower. By the way, if you want to get that old book page paper printed for yourself, I will have it in the description along with all of my other used products. I think that's just in a like free to use printables website I don't know <laughs> I just googled it and it came um, as a result so I've been using that a lot I'm just printing it by myself on the right page, I'm adding a couple of goals related questions and boxes that I can write my thoughts in. I realized that I made this whole spread kind of weirdly because I was looking at a couple of my older bullet journal setups and I kind of combined two of them, but I did not realize that with that, there's kind of the same question two times. So my idea was that, um, you know, around the flower, I could add all of my goals, like my important goals that I have for the second half of this year. And then on the right side I would have other types of goals related things that I could list down but I like added the same kind of goals question as the first thing on the right page so I think I have to change that into something else later but it's totally fine you know I made a lot of mistakes like that this time but as you can see, I was decorating the page a little bit more just to make it a little bit more interesting, but it definitely is super minimalistic like this whole setup so far. And I mean, it's going to be minimalistic to the end, <laughs> but I kind of really like that as well. So, you know, when I fill it with writings, it doesn't look too crowded. But next we will set up my YouTube tracker. So I always make this YouTube related tracker and content planning spread in my bullet journal setups. I don't always use them as much. Like sometimes I use them a little bit less and sometimes I really rely on it, but I always still like to include it because it's a spread that can be very, very important to me. So I started this whole process by first just painting two pansies in the corner of the spread. I was actually not thinking about really painting that many pansies in this whole setup I was thinking that I would decorate the pages in other ways but since they actually did not take that much time at all and they were pretty simple and fast decorations to add to the spreads I ended up just kind of going for that and I, I really liked it so yeah it just might not be the most interesting thing to use since you have seen me painting them many times already but you know it's there <laughs> So I made my YouTube title in the same way as I did my cover page um, uh, year title. As you can see, I was just using that 08 Pigma Micron and then I was making those little thin lines on the inside with my 005 Pigma Micron. I've tried to use that style several times in the past, but it has never worked. So I'm glad that this time it actually did. <laughs> 
I was again adding a couple of sections onto the left page where I can write down my video ideas and things like that. You know, kind of like these um, places where I can write things down, but they don't have to be too specific. Sometimes I just have an idea and I just want to write it down. So I need a space for that. I also added that old book page on the corner again. And then I added that same like beige and I don't know, beige gray um, colored paper as a little box on the bottom of the page. By the way, if you have liked this video so far, make sure to subscribe to my channel and maybe like this video if you like the video. <laughs> I'm also trying to be posting some other videos this June. And overall, like I'm trying to make some fun content for YouTube this summer. I have a lot of fun plans that I'm hoping to, you know, make true and I'm hoping to film them soon. So if you want to know about my future uploads, maybe also press the bell icon so you will be notified of my future uploads. And on the right side, I'm making my most important element on this whole spread, which is my video um, planning section. So as you can see, I'm making tons of small calendars again. I like to use this form of like writing them down in the same way as you would have them in like your iPhone uh, calendar app. So, you know, having those months below each other, that makes so much more sense to me in my brain and I can visualize the months much better. So I like to use this way. If you're wondering how I'm using this, I will have a section on the left side where I can write like one video per week, for example, like if there's one week that I want to post something on YouTube and I have a video planned for that or scheduled for that, I can write it down on the left side and then I can also do plans in advance so for example I can write all of my like plan with me video like dates when I want to ideally uh, upload them on YouTube it's a very simple way of planning them but I really like it and I like to have this like some sort of idea about it before I start working on the videos itself But that is it for my YouTube planner. And then I'm making a new spread that I have never done in my bullet journal setups. And all credit goes to Dea from T and Bucho. She's a great friend of mine and she always does this planned tracker in her bullet journal setups. And I've always liked that idea, but honestly, I haven't necessarily really needed it before. But now when I have outdoor plants and flowers and like, you know, eatable <laughs> plants, does, is that even a word? <laughs> I don't know, but I have like a lot of plants in my balcony that need much more regular watering and they need me to take care of them much more I decided to add one so as you can see I'm cutting a Dutch door here she often makes this kind of um, I think horizontal Dutch door but I decided to do it this way because I just couldn't fit all the things that I wanted to fit in to a horizontal Dutch door because I have a lot of indoor plants so I have like a space for 30 of them I don't have exactly 30 but you know I could always buy some more so I need a little bit of space and also as you can see I'm cutting tabs as well so the tabs are one by six dot spaces and I just have them so it's easier to see where each of the spreads are. But yeah, um, I will link Dea's um, Instagram and YouTube down below. Definitely go check her out. She does amazing bullet journal videos and I believe that she's probably posting her new bullet journal setup videos soon as well. But yeah, as you can see, I'm also including some washi tape, which is kind of adventurous for me. <laughs> I was adding it to the edges of each of those Dutch door flaps. I like it a lot and I just thought that it brought a nice kind of color to my spreads. And I also tried to go with colors that would suit this whole theme pretty well. So on the left side of the spread, this is the area that you can see from each of those Dutch doors. I just added that same beige paper and on each of those flaps, I stamped the um, monthly title. And on the right side of the whole spread that you can see from every spread again, I just stamped the words plant tracker and yeah I also off camera I stamped all of the other headers for each month because I have one Dutch door spread for each month but I just decided to do it off camera because you know I'm just doing the same thing over and over again. And then on the upper side of each of those Dutch door flaps, I'm adding the dates of each month. So from 1 to 30 or 1 to 31. 
and on the left side I'm adding all of the plants that I own. So yeah, we have a lot of plants, especially golden pothos plants, and if you're wondering why I'm writing KK so many times, golden pothos is in Finnish Guldakönus, so I don't know, that was just my own abbreviation of the word. <laughs> So I have six Dutch door spreads for each month of the rest of the year, but I also have two other spreads in this Dutch door set. And those are for the outdoor plants because I decided to make separate spaces for that because I still have like, I have over 15 outdoor plants that I still need to water. So yeah, I was just making a separate space for them at the end of the Dutch doors and I will just make them a little bit differently, but I'm gonna figure that out on my own, on my free time, because I was already spending so much time with filming this video. I also just added a dot for each day for some reason that took so long and I definitely won't be doing that for any of the other spreads, but <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Then I added my keys for this whole tracker. So I have keys for water, fertilized, repotted, harvested, and then for other, if there's any other things I need to note. But yeah, that is pretty simple. And again, credits for Thea. I really love this layout and I'm happy that she um, showed it on the internet so I could also try it out. But now I'm setting up my second to last spread, which is going to be my period tracker and also a little brain dump page on the right side. I always make a period tracker and I would highly recommend it again to everyone who menstruates, which is kind of ironic that I'm saying it because I actually have not used this properly in a while because I just always forget to write things down. <laughs> I definitely should do that. Like I, I always say that you should do that, but I... I rarely actually remember to do it myself, but I'm trying to be better. I feel like I need to focus on my health a little bit better in the second half of this year. So I am making a promise right here to use it more. <laughs> But I have the grid for the whole second half of the year. I can write my symptoms down and just add things I need to add to this grid for each of the days of the month. So then I can track my, um, I don't know, menstruating better and, you know, my cycle and things possibly make a little bit more sense. As you can see on the right side, I added that notes page. I did not really know what I wanted to do with this but I don't like how it turned out. It was super simple, but I made the header off center. And then I was using that same uh, burgundy colored acrylograph. And then I made the border and it kind of looks weird and wonky. So I think that later on, I might actually just glue another page on top of this and make it a little bit nicer because I just don't like how this completely ruins this whole spread to me, but I guess it's fine. Like no one really cares. It's so simple. And then I also painted those pansies on the corner of the spread, but again, it's super simple. Like really, there's not much going on. <laughs> So now we are making my final spread in this whole setup and for that I needed my old bullet journal a little bit because I'm taking my grid spacing guide and also my swatch cards from that. So these are two elements that I always carry with me for, you know, for the other bullet journals that I have so I don't need to make these things you know, completely differently each time. Um, so I'm just decorating the page a little bit, but I'm gonna tell you what this means if you're kind of confused what I just did. So I have this watch page for each of my bullet journals. Again, I have those cards that I have made previously. They just have some pen swatches and watercolor swatches that I have swatched on this paper. And then I just have them ready to go and I can take them with me from bullet journal to bullet journal and I can just, you know, include them in this little envelope. And it's very cute. <laughs> And on the left page, I'm setting up my grid spacing guide. If you don't know what that is, I will have a video explaining it to you down below. It's not mine, but maybe it's just some useful information. So it's just basically is for me to refer back to when I'm setting up my spread so I don't need to individually count the dot spaces to make things symmetrical. As you can see, I'm folding these little paper strips and attaching them to the paper. They're little pockets that just hold this vellum paper together and hold it in the spread nicely. But yeah, that is it. It was probably not the most exciting spread to make because I took most of the elements out of my last bullet channel. So yeah, I still hope you really liked it. And now we are getting to the end of this video.
And now I'm quickly going to be flipping through all of the pages that I made in this video. I really hope you liked it. I had so much fun setting up this new theme that was definitely very much out of my comfort zone, but still really nice to set up. And I really enjoyed the whole process. I cannot believe that we are already at this point where I need to set this up. It just does not feel real, but I guess we have to go with it. <laughs> but yeah, I am really happy that you decided to join in. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and and leave a flower emoji down in the comments so I know you watched until the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!